All right, got a big old mug of coffee for this one. I love checking out new AI and no-code tools. And today, Loverball just dropped Loverball 2.0. I've been notoriously critical of Loverball. I don't think it's the best AI coding or vibe coding tool out there. But regardless, we're gonna take a look at 2.0 and give it a run for its money and show you whether it's worth changing your vibe code editor for it. Let's see what they got going on. Okay, if you want to skip the preamble, then obviously timestamps below, but let's just go quickly go through the email here. Now, first of all, we've got a brand new UI. I'm really interested in this. I'm seeing a lot of companies go light mode right now. Um, don't know what it is. I've always praised Lovable on their really, really nice UI. And this is what I think is going to win them the race in these AI vibe coding tools. I'm not enjoying what I'm seeing there. I'm gonna to reserve too much reservation until we actually load it up, but they've got a new UI. Let's see what it looks like. Multiplayer. Each subscription is now connected to a workspace. It uses a pro subscription of a personal workspace. You can invite two people. I think this is just collaboration. I think this is just basically their way of saying you can collaborate, which is really nice. Replit, which is the code tool that I prefer the most. They already have um, the ability to do this and users with a team subscription can have up to 20 users in their workspace. So they're really pushing the, uh, the enterprise team level sort of program at the moment, which is good to see. Further startups and small enterprises, blah, 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 blah. This feature is rolling out on stage, so you won't see it yet. Good good to know. Chat mode. Now, this is actually really nice. Again, Replit has this chat mode. It's nice just to be able to chat and, and plan things and whatever. I often have to say, plan out. Do not do anything and, and things like that to prevent it from actually writing any code. This is also kind of a cheeky way to get these AI tools without having to pay a separate subscription for them. So you can probably chat to it about, you know, what's the, you know, tell me a joke or all the rest of it. I knew chat mode is 10 times smarter. It interests me how these tools can even do it because they're all using the same models. Now, is it their system prompt that they put on top of it? I don't know. Maybe they've refined their system prompt a little bit to be more, you know, concise or whatever. I really want access to that system prompt or at least to be able to edit that so it's to my specifications because otherwise every project is going to be different. I then have to include all of my specific things in the initial prompt. Anyway, going off a little bit here, it's nice to have a little chat feature just so you can plan things out and uh, not make any code changes. Security scan. This is huge. I've got a video on 101 on security with vibe coding tools there are some things you should do uh, or be aware of when building out your applications now security scans can be great i think this is really top of mind when it comes to developers building or designers building with these no code tools not knowing what security vulnerabilities they're exploiting now the pricing i sent out a tweet saying i think their prices are going to go up lo and behold i think this was 20 bucks a month um, and I don't think they had a team plan. Let's just quickly check their pricing page here. Oh, there's a link that does not work. That's great. Yeah, I'm not sure they had a team plan before. It's pricing changed from there. I think it's gone up by five bucks a month. 100 credits a month. That's small. Now, you'll see my previous video on Windsurf where they only charge you for the initial prompt. Hopefully that's that. I'm going to do a video on how to optimize your prompt so you are getting the most out of that. So if you want to subscribe for that, then please do so. But yeah, 100 credit. Mm, yeah, I knew these guys were the more expensive one, but yeah. Uh, remove level badge, three uh, custom domains and three editors per project. This is nice. This is generous. Normally they charge you, you know, per user, probably on the team plan per user. It includes 20 seats. Now that is very good that it includes 20 seats. You're not paying 30 bucks per user because that's the easiest way for these companies to um, make a lot of money is by charging per seat. They're just giving you 20 users. This is really good. Anyway, that's the price. Um, whether you think that's a good deal or not is, um, yeah. Join Lovable 2 AMA. So yeah, go sign up to that. I'll leave the link down below if you want to. Cool. Enough waffle. Let's get going on Loverball 2 and let's check out this new UI. Now that doesn't look so different. Do you know what? This looks really familiar. Hey, there you go. I knew it looked familiar. This is a project that I worked on uh, last year, end of last year, beginning of this year. Huge project, but interesting. Shout out to Leo there who designed the thing. 
Anyway, let's get going. Now my recommendation will always be go over to Claude, go over to ChatGPT and generate a prompt, a more thorough prompt for what you want. But let's build out um, a Slack clone where users are able to send each other messages privately or in a group. Users can set up groups, private, public. We want to use Superbait. And do you know what? When I first used Lovable, it's sort of like they've got an affiliation with um, Superbase. And I created a project and it created it with Firebase. Now you'd think that it would just be, again, part of that default base prompt that they have, that it would always default to Superbase. Let's leave it. I'm gonna see what it tries to set us up with, or if indeed they still promote Superbase in the same sort of way. I'm a fan of Superbase, so I would always use it anyway. Let's go for authentication needed to log into the app. Users can be admins who are in charge of billing and teams. Users can be users who can use the app. There was something that just came to mind right there. Users are able to upgrade to a pay plan. I don't know what the pay plan will be, but let's see what's going on there. Make the design sexy and dark mode, because we all love a bit of dark mode. Rounded corners, sleek, UI glows, that'll do. Right, let's just see what we get on. Let's go. 10 times smarter, let's go. I wish this was more clearer, I'm sorry, but th this, these little things they put here have really just not, it, 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 put it here, give me a chat. Show me that something's happening. Designed to Slack client with a uh, glimmer chat. Keep messaging platform, design invokes uh, modern messaging, discord slack. So they're still talking about super base. So let's see if it uses super base. And they've still got dev mode going on. They've still got dev mode. If you haven't heard about that, Figma are taking them. Wow, they've put a polite notice to say, please use something else. This is just ridiculous. But developer mode wouldn't offend me too much either. Okay, so it's creating context here. So it, it's a Next.js app, which would be really cool before they struggled to create Next.js apps. Yeah, because something I kind of, I, I forgot to put it in my prompt here is that defining the tech stack that you want to use is a really helpful way for it to infer a few things. But of course, I just want to try this out to see how this 10 times smarter thing works. But yeah, you would normally define the tech stack that you want to use, whether it's React, whether it's uh, Next.js, whether it's Vue, WordPress plugin, whatever. But yeah, we'll see how we get on. Okay, I've created a beautiful dark mode Slack clone called Glimmer Chat. There's much glow going on there, but right off the bat, looks okay. That's fine. You don't really expect too much from the UI perspective of these apps, even when you are uploading from Figma or something. Oh yeah, I was going to show you. Uh, this is the light mode warning, just to show you what light mode kind of looks like, which is pretty much as you'd expect. It's not a dramatically different theme, to be honest, and uh, just just tightened up a little bit. I do like their clean UI. However, I've always said that Replit give you much more in terms of functionality and also debugging features. So anyway, let's connect Superbase. Let's get this going on. Okay, let's create a new project. Let's put this uh, chat. Let's go. Well, actually, that just answers the question as well. Is it going to just use Superbase off the bat? I didn't specify it should use Superbase. And lo and behold, it's using Superbase. So do we need to add authentication? That's good. Third pie, email, it's all configured. So that's good. Is that it? Okay. Let's get started. Let's make up a user. Create account. Okay, ooh, look at this. I love it when loads of stuff is going on. Browse channels. This is great. We've got some channels here. Can I create a channel? Let's call it create a love channel. Create channel not found. Channel created successfully. So there's some stuff going on. Let's just quickly check the database or databases. So there's no databases, so that's what we something we need to do. 
Where is the security thing? I'm guessing these are just... Yeah, so it's gone. So we're not seeing any database things here. Pricing page. Simulate simulate API call C. Yeah, so this is still not there. And I wonder why they do or don't use this. Please, if you're from Loverboard or Replit, let us know why you do this. Why you say um, simulating API call. Let's see if we can just go uh, tell me. Uh, I know it's a simple, but like, let's see. Unexpected error. Okay, fair enough. Um, what about um, what is the primary color of this app? Okay, so it doesn't mind that, but tell me a joke breaks it. Tell me a joke. Okay, so it still works. It just failed in that one instance. Now, I'm curious. Credits used. So it's saying you have four daily credits to use first. Okay, that's interesting. So they still give you the free credits that you're entitled to every day plus uh, your thing. Uh, let's keep going. Uh, another. I want to exceed our free credits and get on to our premium credits to see how it uses it. Tell me a fact. So I think this is up to four now. Tell me how pretty I am. I'm still not using my daily credits. Maybe chat doesn't contribute towards your daily credits. I just don't know. So what's going on here? Okay, we're still going on. Change the primary color to orange. See what it does there. Again, I'm just looking at my credits. I want to know if the first initial prompt is just one credit and then the stream is that. I wouldn't expect so just because the only interface with lovable is pretty much this chat it would seem weird that the first prompt is the only credit to use and that's it but let's see boom we can also change the black there as well which is slightly annoying and the glow there is a little bit but there we go okay lastly i'm going to check out this multiplayer feature and i'm going to call bullshit on their marketing here so I've invited myself uh, another email to this window. And if we look at the email here, they're showing little cursors moving around and showing you that we were, we're both working on the app at the same time. But that is not the case. I mean, granted, I'm on my iPad here. I don't know whether that actually matters. But if I off the screen now, if I go update primary color blue. So you can see then that that's updated on the left hand side here but there's no cursors moving around it is happening in real time i'm i'm confirmed that i like the blue so what i want to see is i'm going to go to edit here i've I'm, I'm selected this button here if i increase i'm increasing the padding which is updated on this end but not that end and save that okay visual edit and there it is there's the update and whilst we're here i'm just going to quickly do this connected okay we are connected let's implement super base auth so yeah while that's doing that just to wrap up we, you're not seeing this this is just marketing imagery i think that's pretty bad of them to be honest, but I'm not sure what you'd benefit from seeing people's mice fly around, to be honest. Let's apply. Let's confirm that is there. So tables, profiles, looks good. Build unsuccessful. User does not exit from various pages. So it did create my user, which is great. And there's probably a whole bunch of other setup that I need to do, but it looks like Superbase has implemented correctly, which is pretty good. But regardless, this multiplayer thing isn't quite what they say, but you are able to work together, which is pretty cool. All right, you saw there that it's got a nice new clean interface. It still begs the question where this 10X Smarter thing comes from, because a lot of these apps seemingly just are creating fancy UIs with 
basic architecture and mocked out functionality. Lovable 2 is not really an improvement in that respect, but regardless, it does look a lot better and uh, hopefully we'll see some improvements along the way. I'm still going to use Replit as my own vibe coding app if I'm not using Cursor or Windsurf for that. What do you think about the new Lovable? Let me know down in the comments. Also, what is your favorite vibe coding tool of choice? Because I want to broaden my horizons. I've got a video coming up on Bolt and V0. I've done videos on Replit and Lovable in the past. So if you know any more or if you've got some strong recommendations, let me know. I can check it out, review it, and come at it from a developer perspective. There'll be an extended version of this video on my Patreon. So if you are subscribed to that, then you'll get much more than what you see in this video. And that'll do it. So until next time, take it easy.